I don't even know what to say. Everything looks so clear and so real. You have to try this. You have to try this. That I, I just I sound crazy. Over the past five years of me practically dedicating my life to VR, I have tried literally dozens of VR headsets, ranging from $10 to $8,000. Some were good and some were terrible, but only once have I ever put on a headset and been completely speechless. And that was the first time I put on a VR headset, until I put on this headset that we're talking about today, the Vario XR3. And it's honestly so good that I'm kind of mad about it because because I'm about to rip out a kidney just so I could afford one. Plus, this thing's just pretty. So I want to get this out of the way right away. This is the Vario XR3. It is a, wait for it, $7,000 VR headset and I've been trying to get my hands on one for almost a year now since it released in December. I've wanted to figure out why so many companies are writing rave reviews about it and why it's so expensive and what does it really do differently or better than this $300 headset that I have here. I mean, how can you justify buying one of these? versus 23 of these. And now that I have it in hand, I have an answer. I did want to say though, whether or not you actually want to buy one of these or you're just interested in VR technology, this is not only one of the most expensive headsets out there, but more importantly, it's one of the most advanced VR headsets out there. The tech crammed inside of the XR3 is almost as mind boggling as experiencing it. I mean, just to power it, you need two power bricks and two DisplayPort 1.4s. That alone should tell you that we're not dealing with some regular old VR headset here. This is something a little different. Now, let's start talking about actual specifications of the XR3. It's jam-packed with hands down the best displays I have ever seen in a VR headset. Rocking a peripheral LCD display at 2880 by 2720 per eye, which to give some context, the Valve Index's resolution is 1600 by 1440. But the XR3 doesn't just have two displays like most headsets. It actually has four. And this is where it gets interesting. Vario has called this the bionic display. The two larger screens serve as peripheral vision while a set of smaller micro OLEDs at 1920 by 1080 fill the center of your vision giving what Vario calls human eye resolution. And you may think 1920 by 1080 is a really low resolution, but since it's a micro OLED, it has an insane pixel density with a perceived resolution that is estimated to be more than 70 times greater than an HTC Vive. I'm not joking here, there are absolutely zero visible pixels, but we'll talk about what that actually means later. The XR3 has eye tracking and using that eye tracking, the headset automatically sets the IPD personalized to each user the moment you put the headset on. But that's not all. It's SteamVR tracked and fully SteamVR compatible, so any games just work. It's got ultra leap hand tracking, dual 12 megapixel pass-through cameras, and for the first time in VR, LiDAR sensors for real-time 3D reconstruction. And the field of view isn't bad at around 115 degrees, pretty comparable to, again, the Valve Index. And things aren't all perfect, of course. There's zero audio on this headset, I guess so people can add their own crazy high-fidelity headphones to their crazy high-fidelity headset. And possibly due to these lenses, there was a little pupil swim, which makes the image a little wobbly on occasion, and that sucks. But it's honestly a very small issue compared to what else this thing offers. So let's start off with what this headset gets right with just the design. Beyond the physical design language of the headset, which is really pretty, this head strap is exactly what I want my own future headsets to have. It has adjustment on the back of the headset for overall tightness, which is normal, but it has a dial on the top that holds the headset to your forehead so there's very little wiggle when moving around, and it's got side dials that further tighten it to your head. When this thing is adjusted properly, it's not flopping around, even if you were to say, run with it. Now, let's finally talk about these displays. Other than just for gaming, I've been searching for a real alternative to using a monitor. If you use, say, a VR headset as a monitor, you wouldn't be limited to screen space or windows or really anything. You'd have an infinitely customizable workspace to do whatever you want. But the problem I've always ran into is VR headsets just aren't clear enough to be an actual replacement, at least not professionally. Text is often blurry, even if it's just a little, or colors don't look right, and I end up always going back
back to a monitor in defeat just because it's easier. And this is the first headset I would seriously consider using as an actual monitor replacement. It's so clear, it's almost weird. And going back into games I've played over and over again, it's like revisiting entire worlds that are remastered in higher resolution. And the field of view here isn't anything groundbreaking, and it's probably the one thing that is certainly beat by many other headsets, but everything is so clear that it sort of makes up for it. And I think this is actually a really clear example. I got a VR game dev to try their own game that they'd already stare at for hours a day in VR to try it on the XR3. And this was their reaction. Wow, it looks so good that I'm confused a little bit. Do, do people know about this yet? <laughs> Getting into typical games just feels, for lack of better words, magical. And I really don't want to go back, but just playing games with a higher resolution with extreme clarity is not why I'm even making this video. And it's not even the real magic. I had probably one of the legit trippiest VR experiences I have ever felt or had with this headset. And this this is where it gets actually magical. The XR3 isn't just a VR headset, it's actually in the name. Vario does sell a VR3 for less than half the cost, but the XR name is where things get crazy. Using LiDAR and the cameras and hand tracking and the sort of augmented reality world, you can bring objects into the real world. And this isn't necessarily something new. I mean, Oculus has a form of it with pass-through API updates, but this is in an entirely different league. The stereo 3D camera cameras in super high resolution make pass-through on the XR3 feel kind of hyper-realistic, and I'm gonna explain it the absolute best I can. It's almost like reality is a game. It doesn't look quite real, but it doesn't look fake. And it also doesn't feel or look like you're just using camera pass-through, which I've used lots before. So when you place a super detailed and lit model of something in that hyper-realistic weird space, it really trips out the brain and sometimes it's hard to tell what's real and what isn't. And I found myself jumping when things flew at me and staring at things. And then something really weird happened. There's a demo for the XR3 that brings a life-size human body into your play space. Now, I don't normally feel this, maybe I'm just unlucky, but there's a very common term in VR called phantom sense. It's where it kind of feels like you're touching something in VR or something's touching you when there's nothing actually there. The brain just fills in the gaps. But in this hyper-realistic XR environment, I for the first time felt a full phantom sense experience while I, I know it's kind of weird, slowly touched this mannequin in my room. I felt tingles all through my fingers and some heat and a little warmth and a little texture too. And it got me so wrapped up into the experience that I was practically shaking by the end of it. It blew my mind in a way that I've only had the first time I hopped in VR and I've been chasing that fresh VR feeling for five years now. And now I'm standing here with what I thought would just be a standard overpriced enterprise VR headset experiencing that all over again but even greater because five years ago to be honest VR kind of sucked. I mean, it was amazing at the time, and it's significantly better now, but I was amazed by a roller coaster simulator at the time. Now, I'm legitimately having slight trouble distinguishing what's real and what's not. And this led me down a very interesting path that I can't stop thinking about. I thought the Index and Quest 2 and Pimax and Vive Pro 2 was where we're at in VR technology right now. I knew that it would get better over the years and inevitably, but I didn't know that VR technology is this far along. That after literal thousands and thousands of hours in VR, I can be completely speechless and shaking because of a new headset and a freaking tech demo. VR always has this thing where you know you're in a simulation, and for the most part, especially after you know how VR works, you know what's real and what's not. But I'm here bumping into things and crashing into monitors and staring at stitching on a freaking virtual car seat for Pete's sake and jumping when my friend just barely touches me. And 
gosh, we are way further along than I thought. And it's so exciting because while VR has gotten a lot better over the years, it's kind of stale sometimes. And what used to excite me and immerse me just doesn't hit the same anymore. It's like I'm desensitized to where we're currently at with tech and it's sad. And that's why I'm so excited. And look, I know that 99% of people watching this video won't and can't buy this headset. I mean, neither can I. I'm just borrowing this for a month from a company that let me borrow it. Thanks, Foxcard Solutions, by the way. But if the only thing I can do is share my experience as a VR enthusiast to other VR enthusiasts, then here it is. And if there's one thing I want you to take away from this video is that there is so much more on the horizon for VR and XR. The technology is there and it's coming and it's kind of here. Every person I put in this headset are VR veterans and they're over here second guessing everything because that filter between real and virtual feels more blurred than it's ever felt before and I don't mean that lightly. All I can say now is I hope that Vario pushes for a more consumer oriented headset anytime soon. It can drop the automatic IPD adjustment and even drop the resolution by quite a bit or drop some of the LiDAR and it'll still likely be the best VR headset available for consumers. VR games look amazing and XR looks unreal but not uncanny. And I can now see why Vario is in business. I can see why this headset costs so much and I can see why company after company rave about the XR3. It's not blind hype, and I wish I could share it with every single one of you, and if you really want to, you could just go out and buy this headset right now and use it to hell, and also pay the annual $1,000 subscription that's required, and then come back here and tell me how your experience was. But I wouldn't do that unless you have some very serious cash lying around, because this is what's coming. This high fidelity blurring of the lines between reality and virtual reality is what our futures look like. It's right here in my hands. It's just out of the reach of everyone that actually wants it. But trust me, my VR family, we've got a very bright future, an exciting future of hardware right in front of us. And this has shown that to me all over again. Kinda like putting on my first headset like I did all those years ago. And it's reminded me there's a lot to look forward to. I will be streaming on Twitch with the Vario after this video, so come on by and say what's up. We'll be doing some fun XR stuff and running through all of the demos. Also, join up in my Discord server to meet other great VR people. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas like Accuric, Benji, Biz, Buwutsi, Destroyer Biscuit, Dysfunctional Potat, Electro Master, Flaming Dragon, Fur Trap, HCG Randon, Henry B, It's Lumi VR, Jonathan, Miss Quinn, Mud King, Ronzarelli, That Brock Guy, and Very Evil Shadow. I couldn't do any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.